One of the most important things you can do on your farm is take a look at micronutrients. Now, this last summer on our farm, we had some of the top yielding corn, soybean, and wheat farmers in the country with actual plots on our farm. It was a lot of fun and we learned a bunch of things. So I've had many farmers ask me, well, what's like the number one thing that you've learned from a lot of these high yield guys? And I just said, micronutrients. Almost all of them have a much bigger focus on micronutrients than we've ever had before. And so today, let's talk specifically about one very important micronutrient. You don't need lots of it, but if you don't have it, you are not gonna have the yield you want. It's zinc. All right, I can hear it already and it's probably going on in your minds. Zinc, well, that's for corn. I'm gonna plant soybeans this year. Or right. I'm gonna plant cotton or I'm gonna plant sorghum or something else. That's a corn nutrient, right? Wrong. When we think about these micronutrients, so often we get into this narrow focus of, well, hey, boron, that's important for alfalfa. Uh, molybdenum, that's important for soybeans. And zinc is important for corn. Forget all that. We need a little bit of all these micros in every crop, so don't worry about that. What we do need to look at, though, is our soil testing program this fall. If you're taking plant tissue analysis throughout the season, that's going to be really important to see how our soil testing is working and how our soil fertility program is working. But it starts right now. When we're taking soil tests this fall, we have to include these micronutrients to make sure we're getting enough zinc. The question, Brian, is what is zinc really doing in the plant? <laughs> all right, so you know what? We've covered what does zinc do in the plant many times here on Ag PhD, and you can look that up yourself. What we really care about is yield. And that's the number one thing that I want to focus on today is let's just look at the yield benefits of zinc. If you've got a real high level of NP and K, and we find a lot of farmers have spent all their money in NP and K and not very much on these micronutrients, you know what? It might not be the NPK limiting you at all. In fact, just the field that's right behind us here, for portion of that field, we're going to put some winter wheat in this fall. And right before the guys seeded it, they said, well, what should we throw out there for nutrients? Uh, let's throw, how about some P and K? We'll throw a bunch of P and K out. And I said, whoa, 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 guys. Let's take a look at the soil test. What's the soil test tell us? Oh yeah, we should look at that first. Well, you know what the soil test said? The soil test said, don't spend one dollar on phosphorus, spend a bunch of money on micronutrients. So we put our all our fertilizer dollars into potassium and micronutrients, all right? It's not the standard fertility program, but guess what's gonna happen to our yield next year and our profitability because we followed the soil test instead of following what the old standard has always been. Okay, well you say, guess what's gonna happen to our yield next year? That's the challenge. If you haven't ever done this and you say, man, I've never done micronutrients, I've never tested for micronutrients or the co-op that's doing the testing on my farm, they never test for micronutrients. It must not be important. Wrong. And then you're worried, okay, I'm going to do this on one field and try it out, but I'm really nervous about the results. You don't have to be nervous about the results because our farm has done this many times and a lot of other farms have done this too. And that's kind of why Brian started talking about, hey, what are the best farmers in the country doing? The best farmers are looking at these micronutrients, looking at what levels they need in their field, and then picking out specific micronutrients that can help them increase their yields. And certainly, if you do address NP and K, that's great, but then you get the micronutrients also up to a good level, that's where you can really see your yields take off. All right, so here's what we're looking for is 1.8 parts per million to 3.5 parts per million on a Midwest lab soil test. Every lab has a little different extraction process, maybe give you a little different number. So we're just talking about Midwest labs. I can't tell you based on your lab where you should be. But all I know is if we're talking corn, soybeans, or wheat with Midwest Labs, we'd really like to see that level in the 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million range. I will tell you, uh, embarrassingly, we've had some fields where it's a half a part per million or 0.1 parts per million is our record low. Okay, if it's 0.1 parts per million and I need to be to 1.8 parts per million, how do you think that's affecting yield? It's a big, big deal. Yet, here's the nice thing, it doesn't cost a lot of money because we're only talking about a few pounds per acre. You can go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. It's a free app for your smartphone or your tablet. And you can look at how much zinc does the crop actually need. That's one component of it. But we just want to get the soil level to be in that 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million so it's also available. So we know how much we're going to remove, but we got to make sure it's available in the soil. And the problem is if we don't have enough parts per million in total, we might have other micronutrients or other macronutrients like phosphorus phosphorus, for example, binding that up. All right, so the big question now is how do we get this zinc on? Because you got two things here. One, building up the soil. That sounds like a broadcast application to me. And then two, feeding this year's crop 
and many times, especially when we're talking about micronutrients, we're looking at something like a two by two placement where we have immediate access to those micros. What's your feeling? Well, my feeling is this. I absolutely want to build the soil up, and yes, in that case, maybe a broadcast is the way to go, and we just have that over with. Keep in mind, though, that zinc stays with the soil. It's not going to leach down. So what I'm trying to say here is, let's say you're in a no-till situation and you're going to broadcast it out on the soil surface and then you have some erosion. If your soil moves, guess what moves with it? Not just phosphorus, but zinc also. So ideally, in a no-till situation, I'd like to put that down in the ground at least a couple inches. In terms of what you're going to put out there, we usually like to have a blended micronutrient package, and we'll typically do that in furrow. You can do it two by two, and then you could use more. But we like the blend of a bunch of different micros to make sure we have a good balance, and we can feed that plant real early in the season when it's cold, root growth isn't much, all that kind of thing. Then, in addition to that, we're talking typically about products like zinc sulfate. That's about as cheap a form as you can get if you want several pounds per acre out there. We want to try to do this as economically as possible whenever we're putting fertilizer on and a lot of times these micronutrients will come together with sulfur, zinc sulfate, copper sulfate, manganese sulfate, and so on. Well zinc is a very important nutrient for corn and for other crops as well. When you're doing your soil testing this fall, that's one that we really strongly suggest you looking at in addition to the other micronutrients. Well, another thing you may be looking at this fall is how you're going to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show.